Good morning, friends, and welcome to the online service of Concord United Methodist Church. We're in the season of Lent. This is the second Sunday, and our theme is a journey of hope. And we hope to be together to be together soon. And our hope will not be disappointed. Let's worship our God. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joys with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ call. Please join me in the responsive reading. Come, worship with us today. Worship the judge of the earth. We worship the God who inhabits our world and dwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around. Within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for distant thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life. The words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who, who inhabits our world, who indwells our lives. Rise up, judge of the earth. We worship and praise you always. For when our anxiety is great, your consolation brings us great joy and hope. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is High Firm of Foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, he is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen and help thee and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand when through the deep waters I call thee to go the rivers of woe shall not thee overflow for I will be with thee thy troubles to bless and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress and through fiery trials thy pathways shall lie my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply the flame shall not hurt thee i only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine the soul that on jesus still leans for repose i will not i will not desert to its foes that soul through all hell should endeavor to shake i'll never no never no never forsake now it's time for our missions and ministries we have a new roof and we are repaying the loan on that roof and we are looking for any donations that folks might be able to make any small donation of five or ten dollars it all adds up to help us pay off 
the, the uh, roof. If you would like to make a memorial gift, please consider making a repayment to this campaign and just put roof in the memo line of the check, <clears throat> excuse me, and our blessings and thank yous from the, tr the trustees. Saturday mornings with Mr. Wesley continues for one more week. The conference website has a series of videos. It's for children and young people to watch, and it's lots of fun. And the videos examine what it means to be good and do good. You can go to the conference website. That's the conference website at cnumc.org, and just click on Saturday mornings with Mr. Wesley. <clears throat> Winter nights is coming up. It's a little different this, week, this year because of the pandemic. Our church will be providing food for the Winter Nights families and we'll be having a fundraiser walk to raise money for that food, as well as to provide assistance in funding the Winter Nights ongoing program. The walk is April the 11th, coming up in just six weeks at 1 p.m. and it's gonna take place in Concord. We'd love you to sponsor as many walks as you can, walkers as you can. For more information, <clears throat> excuse me, please contact Carolyn at Missions Committee 1645 at gmail.com. We've got a number of small groups in the church that are very active and they'd love to have new members, so please contact the leader for more information. On Wednesday evenings, we have a Bible study on Zoom starting at 6.30 p.m. They're reading the book, The Call, The Life and Message of the Apostle Paul, written by Reverend Adam Hamilton. They do a chapter uh, a week and they view a video and uh, they've been studying that book for a couple of weeks. Each of the book studies last 12 weeks and then they determine what they will do next. If you'd love to join that group, reach out to Steve Pierce at 925-518-4447. Our Christ Care Men's Group is every first and third Friday. Next one will be March 5th. They meet in the mornings at 10.30 to noon on Zoom. And the, that group gets to know each other. They're reading the Bible. They're doing mission outreach. And they also raise up concerns and prayers and discuss health, diet, and exercise. If you'd like to join them, contact Jim McGuire at 925-997-997. 2257. We have the group Disciples Under Construction. That's led by Michelle, Michelle Pope. And you can reach Michelle at Michelle at ASEB, A -S -E -B, dot org. The small group for 30s and 40 year olds is Unshakable Hope. They meet on Facebook Live. And if you'd like to join them, you can go to our website, concordumc.org, and just click on Facebook. We wanna see what everybody's up to as we're still in place at home. Send us any pictures of your gardening or walks or anything that you're doing. We'd love to see those. And please send them in so we can see them on future services. If you have prayer requests, we want to get all the prayer requests we can and we'll read them during the service, if you could send those to Pastor Lee before 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Our children's promo, uh, moment this morning is brought to us by Miss Kathleen. Good morning, children. I'm so glad you joined us this morning. So Mr. Al on Valentine's Day talked a lot about loving each other and loving our neighbors as ourselves. That was a couple weeks ago. And another one of your Sunday school teachers, Miss Karen, last week talked about how Jesus taught us to love others as ourselves and being kind and helpful to others and that we should always show how much we care. Miss Karen also talked about how we all have people we love in our lives, parents, brothers and sisters, grandparents, friends and neighbors. So this morning I wanted to continue to talk about loving others and some different ways that we can love people. So we are very blessed to have people who are kind to us and who love us in our lives. Some of those people have loved you since the day you were born and will always love you. It's wonderful to have those people in our lives. 
it's also pretty easy to love these people because they are kind to you and they show that they care about you. But it's not so easy to love children or people who don't love us or who aren't nice to us, even though that's what God wants us to do. There are probably children that you've been around who might have been mean to you sometimes. Maybe even your brother or your sister is mean to you sometimes. And you've probably also met children who do things like calling other children names or hitting other children. Do you feel like you could love those children or even like those children? Children who do things like that, those mean things? It's not that easy to do. So when we hear that God wants us to love our enemies, we might wonder, why should we really be expected to love people who are mean to us, who treat us badly? <clears throat> and we also might wonder, how can we do that? How can we love these people that are mean to us? Well, let's listen to what Jesus told us to do. In the Bible, we read about a time <clears throat> when Jesus was teaching a large group of people on a hillside that was called the Mount of Beatitudes. That day, he gave a great sermon, which is called the Sermon on the Mount. In that sermon, Jesus said all kinds of wonderful things. And he said a few things that were kind of surprising to the people listening. Like when he said, you've heard it said by others that you should love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you, you are to love your enemies and pray for them. So Jesus was saying that if someone does mean things to you, you should love them and you should pray for them. Many people hadn't heard Jesus say that before. Why do you think Jesus wants us to love our enemies? He knows that's not an easy thing for us to do. So why do you think he wants us to love our enemies? One reason Jesus wants us to love our enemies is so we can show the true forgiving love of God to others. When you love someone who has been mean to you, it sets a good example for others to follow, and it can even sometimes turn enemies into friends. That sounds like something Jesus would want us to do. Jesus said that if we only love the people who love us, we're no different than anyone else in the world. Most people love the people who love them, but we are God's people. We love God. And we are called to love everyone, even our enemies. Jesus said that when we love our enemies, we are acting like children of God. So I'm gonna ask you again about children you know. Do you know some children who are hard to get along with? <clears throat> they just don't seem to really get along with anyone? Are there children you just don't want to be around for some reason? A lot of people might avoid trying to be around a child who acted mean or hit other children, etc. Maybe you know some children who are always making fun of other kids. For some reason, these children are showing meanness to others instead of kindness. So it would be easy for you to answer their unkind actions with unkind actions of your own. If they call you a name, you could call them a name back. Or you could talk behind their back or you could pick on them in return for how they treated you. But would that be setting a good example of God's love for others? Or do you think that if we did that, it would help to turn an enemy into a friend? I don't think so. Jesus wants us to love all children, to love everyone, because everyone is a child of God, 
even if they are mean sometimes, which most of us are, sometimes. God wants us to be loving and kind to everyone we meet. Some of those children who are mean to others may really be hurting inside and they may need a lot of love. So God wants us to share his love with those children and, and others, especially to people who are feeling sad or who are hurting. When we love people who may be hard to love, it's kind of like bringing a little bit of heaven to earth. What do you know about heaven? Your parents may have talked to you about it. Have you heard a lot about heaven? Well, the Bible tells us that heaven is a real place. It's the place Jesus left when he came to earth, and it's where he lives now while he prepares a place for us. The Bible tells us that heaven is a place full of love, where there's no sadness, anger, or hate. It is a place where everyone loves each other and no one even has enemies. Jesus taught us to say the Lord's Prayer that ends by saying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus wants us to say the Lord's Prayer and to pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he wants us to share his love with people while we are here on earth, just as it is shared in heaven. Wouldn't it be great if earth could be more like heaven, where everyone loves each other and no one has enemies? We can make earth more like heaven by loving everyone, even our enemies. And by loving our enemies, it's a way to bring heaven to this world because in heaven, there's only love. When we choose to love others, especially people who don't love us, we are spreading some of heaven around our world. So love your friends, love your classmates, and love your enemies, and let the love of Jesus shine in you. I'd like to end with a prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving us. We know you love us, and we also have a lot of people who love us here on earth. It is easy to love you, and it's easy to love the people that love us. But can you please help us and teach us how to love our enemies? and help us to learn how to make a friend of someone who has been mean to us. Please help us to do that so that we can bring a little bit of heaven to earth by loving everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our anthem this morning is With All Your Hearts uh, from Jim McGuire's CD. If with all your heart ye truly seek me, ye shall ever truly find me. find me find him that I might even come before
before his presence. Come before his presence. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. If with all your heart he truly seek me, he shall ever truly find me. Because we can't be in church together, we can't pass the peace in the same way, but we can still pass the peace. It just has to be a little different. When we're at church, we can hug each other and talk as long as we want and um, feels really good to hug each other. But with Zoom, we can still hug each other by giving ourselves a big hug and then sending it out to you, passing that hug out to you. And we can use American Sign Language to pass the piece to you by saying, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. May the peace of Christ be with all of you this week. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 94 verses 1 to 23. The Lord is a God who avenges. O God who avenges, shine forth. Rise up, judge of the earth. Pay back to the proud what they deserve. How long, Lord, will the wicked, how long will the wicked be jubilant? They pour out arrogant words. All the evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, Lord. They oppress your inheritance. They slay the widow and the foreigner. They murder the fatherless. They say the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Take notice, you senseless ones among the people, you fools, when, when will you become wise? Does he who fashioned the ear not hear? Does he who formed the eye not see? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? Does he who teaches mankind lack knowledge? The Lord knows all human plans. He knows how they are futile. Blessed is the one you discipline, Lord, the one you teach from your law. You grant them relief from days of trouble till a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not reject his people. He will never forsake his inheritance. Judgment will again be founded on righteousness and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evil doers? Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death. When I said, my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, <clears throat> supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation, <clears throat> excuse me, brought me joy. Can a corrupt throne be allied with you, a throne that brings on misery by its decrees? The wicked band together against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my fortress and my God, the rock in whom I take refuge. He will repay them for their sins and destroy them for their wickedness. The Lord our God will destroy them. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Our next hymn this morning is Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure, save from wrath and make me not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. This is the second Sunday of Lent, and we had the first Sunday of Lent last Sunday, and people still do not know what Lent is. So I, I have to explain about Lent. First of all, I'm wearing purple robe and purple stole today because this is the color of Lent, color of repentance. And sometimes you see I'm wearing white is for the life and green is also for the thriving life. And also sometimes I wear red for Pentecost, like the fire of the spirit. So this is the color of repentance. We want to repent our sins. You know, after we hear wonderful children's sermon that Catherine preached today, we read the scripture that Vince read is all about vengeance and judgment and people do not know how to reconcile these two. The key is that we have to read it as if it's the prayer of other people because of the sins that I have done. So it's not my prayer that I am praying to God because of my predicament, but it is somebody else's prayer because of the sins that I committed. So when you point a finger to somebody else, remember that three fingers are pointing at, back at to you. So during this Lent, we have to read the scripture as if all those accusations are pointing at me then we know that we are the sinners and we can love our enemies. So that's the kind of frame that I'm working with you during this Lent. This Lent is 40 days, 40 days preparation time for Easter. Before we experience the new life, we have to go through this Lent. And as you know, we started on Ash Wednesdays. We heard that we are dust and we will go back to dust. That's our humble position. 
And some people actually counted after that <laughs> sermon, they counted that Pastor Lee is 46 days between Lent, uh, Ash Wednesday and Easter. And I said, yeah, because we don't count the Sundays. We call Sundays Little Easter. Why? Because every Sunday is a celebration of Little Easter. That's why we do not keep Sabbath from the Old Testament. It's on Saturday. And we observe and celebrate Sunday, Little Easter of the New Testament. And still some denominations, Seventh-day Adventists or other people, they still keep Sabbath on Saturdays. And we try to celebrate Easter because we are Easter people. That's why we don't count Sunday. And as I said, it is easy for us to point out somebody else's sin. And when we read the Psalm, read it as if somebody else is praying to God because of me. Oh Lord, you God of vengeance. You God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Give to the proud what they deserve, O Lord. How long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked be jubilant, exert? So always I think I'm the victim and I pray this prayer and God should punish somebody else. But when you change the viewpoint, and read it as if somebody else is praying to God because of me, this is different. Most of the time we think of someone else when you read it. However, someone else can pray to God like this because of our sins, because of my sins. Because February is the Black History Month, we can also hear cries of black brothers and sisters like this when you sold and bought slaves. And you may say, oh, I have never sold or purchased slaves. But in the Bible, we always have this group identity. Like when the Israelites were experiencing Exodus, we think that as if we are going through the Exodus. So we confess somebody else's sin as if it is our sins. And when you read the Bible, we have tendency to apply the Bible to someone else's action many of the times. But when you read Psalm 93, 4, 7, it says, they pour out their arrogant words. Then I have to stop and think, did I pour some arrogant words to somebody else? Maybe I did uh, to my children or some other people. All the evildoers boast. Yeah, I did make some boasting statement, right? They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the stranger. They murder the orphan. They say the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not perceive. Well, personally, maybe we didn't do it, but many times we have done that in many other countries. If we think about the world history, there were so many invasions and wars and so many widows and orphans, they cry out to God. And we can just deny that, oh, it's not my personal action. We belong to the country and community actually have done that. So what did we do for the widows, the strangers, and the orphans? So Lent is the time when we examine our policies, our national and communal policies and actions and systems for the widows, the strangers, and the orphans. Let us ask to ourselves, have we not afflicted God's heritage? Sometimes it is hard to know who is doing what. And Psalm 93, 8 to 11 challenges us saying, understand, O duelist of the people, fools, 
when will you be wise? And I'm thinking, am I a fool? Maybe I am. When can I be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eyes, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, he who teaches knowledge to humankind, does he not chastise? The Lord knows our thoughts, that they are but an empty breath. Yes, Lord, I'm just an empty breath. I live one day and the next day I may die. And still I'm arrogant and I'm boastful. And I think I have nothing to do with this psalm. But God knows. And the other day somebody sent me an email with all the things that the Google does. Google can trace our whereabouts and be careful there is a big brother. And I said, well, big brother can watch our private lives. However, they cannot see my innermost thought. I do not fear Google. I fear God who knows my thoughts and mine. So if Google can search me, I, I would welcome them. I can pretend that I pray all day, read the Bible all day, do good things to others, pretending I'm a good pastor. But God knows my innermost thought. And I can hide it from God. On the other hand, in the middle of all the challenges of life, we can still be happy if we are in good relationship with God. The Psalm 93, 12, 15 shows us how. Happy are those whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law, giving them respite from days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous and all the upright in heart will follow it. I wish I am the righteous that this psalm is talking about. If this is for somebody else, I'm in trouble. So whenever I have some kind of hardships, I would take it as God's discipline, as God's means of grace. I want to pray every day to see if I am honest in front of God. I read the Bible every day and meditate on it. When I meditate on it, I would think it is about me, not about somebody else's sins. I want to serve others with our time, talent, and treasure, and testimony. That's why I went to bikeathon and ride bike. I want to walk for the winter nights. And I will do some volunteer works that our church is, is doing together. And I want to worship God everywhere, not only in sanctuaries, even though I have this background in my, of my sanctuary, but I will worship God everywhere. You know, the key is that we have to examine ourselves. Then we have our help and advocate. Even when we do not see God, we know this because we have experienced God many times in our lives. Psalm 93, 16 and 19 says, Who rises up for me against the wicked? God. Who stands up for me against the evil doers? God. If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought my foot is slipping, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolation cheer my soul. That's why I sing. That's why I worship God. In the middle of all the challenges, it is God who help us. And we know that we have hope and advocate. Who are our allies? With whom can we be one? The Psalm 93, 20 and 23 ask these rhetorical questions. The answer is clear. 
Can wicked rulers be allied with you? Those who contrive mischief by statute? No. They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. I don't want to be a part of it. We would be allies of God. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God the rock of my refuge. He will repay them for their iniquity and wipe them out for their wickedness. The Lord our God will wipe them out. I don't want to be wiped out with all those wicked people. So we have to choose the side. We have to choose the right side. We have to choose the side of the Lord. Then when God judged all the world, the living and the dead, the living and the quick, God will be on our side and we will be on God's side. So do not just see what your naked eyes can see. Scientists that they are using microscope to see invisible lives, all those coronaviruses, <laughs> we can see those pictures. And they use the telescopes to see the faraway blurry object and we can see the stars. Now we need to use our spiritual eyes to see God working in this universe. When things seem tempting and challenging, so we need this discipline to have spiritual eyes. Otherwise, we have to have cataract surgery, spiritual cataract surgery to see God in the middle of our challenges. Such a spiritual eyes can be nurtured and developed with proper discipline that we call the means of grace. So this land is a time that we develop and nurture these ways to see God. And Jesus has conquered the power of sin and death. We can see that. That means we have vaccines for all those temptations and challenges. Do not worry about death, which is conquered by Jesus on the cross. Jesus said, I conquer the power of sin and death. And do not worry about daily bread, which God will provide. We pray for our daily bread and God will provide. Do not worry about guilt, for which Jesus paid the price on the cross. Jesus said, you are forgiven. We have done so many things, but Jesus said, I paid the price for you. So be confident as children of God. You are created by God, saved by Jesus, and loved by the Holy Spirit during this Lent. Restore your relationship with your creator, savior, and sustainer, the Holy Spirit, and be confident and have hope. This is what we are going to do through this continuous journey through hope. May God be with us all in this journey. Amen. Let us uh, pray. Thank you, God for the new eye that we can see your words from different perspective. Now we realize that it's not all about our enemies. The Bible is convicting me. The words of the Bible is pointing at me. So I repent my sins. And now I know that you are working for those victims of my sins. And I repent. And I want to be a part of the solution. So forgive me and use me. Break me and mold me. And make new child of your kingdom from me. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
We support our church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our testimony. And if you'd like to support our mission and ministries, please consider mailing a check to Concord UMC, 1645 West Street in Concord. Or you can visit our website, concordumc.org, and just click on the online giving button, and that will lead you to direct links for giving. You can also support the missions and ministries by an online bill pay through your bank. Just ask your bank how to set that up to make that happen. Thank you for your support. have a number of prayer requests this morning. We have a prayer request from Valerie Sergi, continued prayers for John's mother, Sharon. She has had some complications with the heart surgery she had and had to return to the hospital. So we'll keep Sharon in our prayers. Linda Jenks is asking for prayers for her brother and his wife, Sue, on the prayer chain. Uh, Peter has been diagnosed with esophageal cancer and is undergoing chemo and radiation. So keeping Peter in our prayers. From Teresa Rios, she's asked for continued prayers for a young boy we've been praying for, three-year-old Adrian, who is on chemotherapy. He has stage four leukemia. His family needs lots of prayers since they can't have anyone but his mom and dad and sister in the house. And we know he has a long journey ahead of him. Prayers for Betsy, Betsy's sister Phyllis, who has a longtime companion, Bill, who passed away this week due to complications from COVID-19. We wanna continue our prayers for Dr. Ray Bauer, recovering from knee surgery, and Nick Latchley, that's G's husband, who is recovering from thyroid surgery. Prayers for Ray and Nick. And we have a prayer of joy from Harriet, Montecito Senior, Living Home is now allowing folks over to make a lunch re reservation. So you can have lunch with Helen Johnson. You have to wear a mask, of course. Uh, call 925-682-5838 to set that up. We have some birthdays coming up. Happy birthday to Valerie, Valerie Sergei, to Jessica Howe, April Joy Ochoa, Karen Solo, Irving Lee, and Ray Bauer all have birthdays coming right up. We've been praying for George, that's Chuck's younger brother and Karen's brother-in-law. He is in the ICU in Santa Rosa, but our prayers are being answered. He is feeling much better and moving around. We have a prayer from Mitch Shudston's family. Her daughter passed away from leukemia. So we pray, pray for all the family with Sharon's passing. We wanna pray for all the people recovering in Texas and in the central part of the country from all the frigid winter storms that they went through and are now trying to recover from. And we wanna keep in our prayer all those who are still suffering from the pandemic who are wrestling with homelessness or lack of food or unemployment. But we have prayers of joy for the millions of people who are now getting vaccinated across the country, up to about 12% of the country has been vaccinated, which gives us hope for the future. Pastor Lee. Let us pray together. Lord, we mention all these names because they are near and dear to our heart. We have a mother who pray for the daughter and we have children who pray for their parents. We have friends who pray for their parents, parents friends. And Lord, we have so many church members who pray for other church members. Because we care for them, we know that our prayers are answered in many different ways. Some come back to life and restore their health. 
Some passed away. However, we believe that you invited them to eternal life at your time. So we still give thanks to you and we praise your name. Lord, we remember Sharon Mitchie Sunstone's daughter and all the sisters who tried to save her. But now we accept your decision and praise you. And Lord, we pray for all those family members, Sharon, Peter, Sue, Adrian, Phyllis, Ray Bauer, Nick, and all those people who have a birthdays, Valerie, Jessica, April, Karen, Irving, and many others. And Lord, we remember many other people whose name we could not say in public with so many different regions, but we know that you care for them. So we pray for all of our brothers and sisters and all those unnamed people who passed away half a million of Americans during this COVID pandemic and all those people in Texas and other places who are going through hardships and challenges. And still, we have hope because we care for each other and we know that you care for all of us more than we do. And with this hope, we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, our hope, who taught us how to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is O oh God in Heaven. O oh God in Heaven, grant to thy children mercy and blessing, songs never ceasing, love to unite us, grace to redeem us, O oh God in heaven, dear Lord our God. Jesus, Redeemer, may we remember thy gracious passion, thy resurrection. Worship we bring thee, praise we shall sing thee, Jesus, Redeemer, Jesus our Lord. Spirit descending, whose is the blessing? Strength for the weary, help for the needy. Sealed in our kinship, thine be our worship. Spirit descending, spirit adored. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus who forgive our sins and the love of our God who loves us unlovable, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit who convicted us and indicted us and still restore us to the path to salvation, be with us all who are going through this continuous journey of hope in land ever and forever. Amen. <laughs>